for Glenn Hoddle, an important season ahead with Bobby Robson shortly to name his first England squad. But Hoddle is still troubled by problems in both Achilles tendons, and he only plays today after clearance from a specialist on Friday morning. Steve McMahon also faces a vital few months, with Everton now expecting him to turn potential into fulfilment after a relatively unproductive time last season. McMahon is a significant figure in Everton's midfield, but there's one change from the side that swamped Aston Villa on Tuesday, Alan Ainsco coming in for the injured Alan Irvin. Adrian Heath stays up front alongside Graham Sharp, both having scored twice in midweek, when much of the prompting came from Kevin Sheedy, the former Liverpool player, wearing number 11. Tottenham are able to field the side which won at Ipswich on Tuesday. Mick Hazard is the substitute, though, in place of Ricky Villa, who continues his quest for match fitness in the reserves. Hoddle. Well read by McMahon. Played long by Sheedy, changing the point of the attack in the direction of Heath. Burrows is up in support. The pass just came behind him, but Burrows might make something of it yet. And Sheedy places it in. The goal is given. Everton thought they might have had a penalty when Burrows went down, but their disappointment turned to joy because Kevin Sheedy wasn't left appealing after this incident here. Burrows falling. And it was Hoddle who made the mistake, and Sheedy capitalised. His first goal for his new club. Sharp. Lacey is the defender, wearing number four. Calvin there as well. And Sharp decided in the end to play the ball off Lacey and gamble on winning a corner. And that's the way it went for him. Everton now employ Kevin Sheedy's left foot to take corners from their right. Heath coming off the near post. Sharp waiting behind him. And King. And the goal from Billy Wright. Everton exploit the set piece. In fact, at the near post, I think it came off a Tottenham head. It was Tony Galvin. But it reached King, a nod back, and not over the line from right. It's 2-0. And Clements looks perplexed. Galvin showing strength to get away from Burrows. Arm trying to help out for Everton. It's still Galvin. And finally deflecting off Burrows. And through the efforts and endeavour of Tony Galvin his best to try and lift what's been a dismal first half so far for Tottenham. And it was Miller who came in, a prod from Mabbott, and Everton got it off the line. Paul Miller coming in strongly behind Archibald. There was Mabbott, and it was John Bailey who saved the day for Everton. Ainsco now borrows. Everton rather drawn towards the man in possession, although Bailey here has checked out sensibly. This is King. Good defending there by Gary Mabbott. The early ball from right was a fine one. Bailey in goes sharp. And McMahon. It's all going the way of Everton. 3-0 after 33 minutes. The early pass from Billy Wright for Bailey. He saw Sharp in the middle. It didn't quite drop for Sharp, but it did for McMahon. Everton scored three times in the first half against Aston Villa on Tuesday night. I don't think they expected to match that feat here against Tottenham, but they certainly have done.
Crooks. Archibald. 3-1. Perhaps the euphoria getting the better of Everton, who lost their concentration. The corner had been played short. And Archibald with the confidence to turn past Higgins and fire it in just under the bar. His second goal of the season. And it rather brings Everton back down to earth. Coming within a minute of the goal from McMahon that had put Everton momentarily three up. Right header. Nice touch from Crooks. It's Tottenham having picked up a little bit of confidence, having pulled one goal back. And King finds the free kick given against him. Just turning Garth Brooks. Four in the wall. Southall rather drawn to the middle of his goal. And the chip towards Galvin. And Tottenham could so easily have exploited Hoddle's skill. Everton were concentrating perhaps on defending the direct shot. Galvin had already set off on his run and then drove the ball fiercely across the face of the goal. It just needed it. Hoddle again. Now Brook. Man trying to get with him, and Gary Brook, who they believe at White Hart Lane is among the best finishers on the staff. Almost showing Everton that quality then. Shooting under pressure, and how close it was. And Burrows can push forward again. Ainscombe, or Sheedy. Sharp has held that position wide on the left, and did better this time. He can attack Perriman perhaps here, and Miller, and Sharp. Tess Clements out, King's in on the rebound, and Graham Sharp reminds Tottenham of his shooting power. He fired one past Ray Clements last year, and he stung the fingers of the England goalkeeper again there. And Andy King, was in to try and make something of the rebound. And Hewton had pilfered an extra yard and is punished by the throw being given to Everton. Taken quickly by Ainscoe. Driven in by Burrows. And how spectacular that would have been from Andy King. Even he appreciated the exhilaration of the moment as he swung into the volley and it sped past the junction with Clements beaten. Sharp now brought down by Lacey. Now what will the referee's reaction be here? The referee's judgment is called into question as to whether that incident was when there was a probable threat to a goal. Lacey came across, brought down Sharp, and John Lacey is sent off, judged by referee Don Shaw as having committed a professional foul. Hoddle, Galvin, who has done well for Tottenham in this game against the odds. Now, did Bailey bring him down? And if so, was that a potential goal-scoring opportunity? John Bailey, of course, has already been cautioned. And I do believe John Bailey has been sent off as well. Galvin had got past Higgins. He's looking to bear in on goal himself. And there, Bailey brought him down. Here's Burrows. And here's Kick. Burrows again. Sharp collecting just on side. Ainsco. Well, I don't think he was quite aware that the chance was going to be as easy as it turned out to be.